Okay. Well, my name is Hannah Anderson. I'm the director of Hillies International Greenville. I'll tell you a little bit more about myself and how I got involved in Hillies a little bit later on. Um, but first, I'll talk about what Achilles is, what we do, um, and what we're like um, in Greenville. So Achilles believes that running is um, the simplest, um, in my opinion, the best sport. Uh, because if you think about it, if you're an able-bodied person, you just put on your shoes, you leave your house, and you go for a run. It's the simplest, purest sport there is, really. Um, and you don't need a lot of equipment. You don't need a lot of special, fancy things or a lot of money in order to do it. And so the idea behind Achilles is that um, able-bodied people can just decide one day to go for a run. Why can't people with disabilities just wake up and decide to go for a run? And so Achilles provides all of the support and equipment and everything that's necessary for people with disabilities to run alongside their community members. And I'll talk about it more, but we have a really big push for mainstreaming um, so that people with disabilities are involved in mainstream athletic events alongside their peers. Mm -hmm. So, a little history of Achilles. Um, Achilles was started in the 70s by Richard Traum, who's the first amputee to run the New York City Marathon. Mm -hmm. And um, he's actually the first amputee to run any marathon major in the world. And he woke up one day, decided, I'm going to run a marathon, and then uh, went to his local Y and realized that there was nothing about training for a marathon with a disability. And um, he was just shocked by that, and no one had ever done that before. And he got together with a couple of his friends who were also amputees and realized this is something we need to, we need to work on. We need to make this accessible for everyone. Um, because there's a lot of people who love to run um, who might never get a chance. And so he started running a couple of his buddies. Um, if you ever hear him speak, he will joke that he started Achilles because he came dead last in his division in the New York City Marathon. And he was like, oh man, if I could just get some of my friends out here that are slower than me, I could beat them. So that's how he started Achilles. Um, and since then, it's grown to over 50 chapters worldwide. So we have chapters in Brazil, in Mexico, in Mongolia, in England. It's really all, all over the world. And um, it fills an important gap in um, adaptive sports. So for why Achilles and why is it so important, if you think about what's available for people with disabilities, Oftentimes, opportunities for physical fitness are um, they're reserved for school or therapy, and there's not a lot outside of that. Um, if you're in the medical field, you know that if you prescribe a patient maybe three months of physical therapy, best case scenario, they go to every session, they have a chance to go, they enjoy it, they get stronger. What happens when that three months is over and they go home, they lose that physical fitness because there's not a whole lot of chances for them to get stronger or to be in any kind of sports. Um, so Achilles fills that need, and there's you know a lot of competitive sports that are available for people with disabilities, the Paralympics, Special Olympics, um, but Paralympics are really for elite athletes. Uh, you have to really spend a ton of time training and go to the training centers and be a full-time athlete to do the Paralympics. And Sp Special Olympics is primarily for children. So what what is there for the average adult who just wants to go out and go for a run one day? Um, Achilles, we work with Paralympics, we work Special Olympics where you know, we all serve each other and we all provide athletes for each other, but we fill that gap between elite athletes, children, school, therapy, to provide sports for adults who just want to get out with their friends um, and be physically fit. Uh, so our main goals are really just to provide opportunities for physical fitness, and we do this primarily through running. Um, so we are a running club, and people ask me, like, what is Achilles, this magical Achilles? Uh, it's just runners running with other runners. And so our runners who are able-bodied are known as volunteers or guides, and they just run alongside our volunteers, our athletes with disabilities. And um, we put a lot of emphasis on the fact that they're there to run with them. Um, they're not there to help them to do the running for them. Um, they're there to just run alongside them. And we you know, make sure that they are trained and how to safely guide. Uh, they provide medical support, safety support. They just ensure that our runners with disabilities are safe, they're having a good time, and they provide companionship during the run. Because if you've ever run before, you know, running with other people is a lot more fun than running by yourself. Uh, so we put a big emphasis on just providing that for people with and without disabilities. So anybody can show up to Achilles, so there's a place for them um, at our practices and our group runs. Secondly, uh, we want people to participate in mainstream athletic events. So we work with the race directors, with community developers, to make sure that races that are happening locally and around the world um, are accessible, they're universally designed, so that anybody can show up to a race 
run it um, and have a good time and not encounter safety issues or hazards. Um, and Achilles, uh, we collaborate with all the marathon majors and um, local races as well to make sure that happens. So if you are, if you know any race directors or anything um, who want to make the race accessible, we're a resource for that as well. Um, and then thirdly, and for me this is the most important, is just to promote personal achievement and pride in your work. Um, because um, when parents come to me, especially with kids who have disabilities, um, I tell them that learned helplessness is not a thing at Achilles. We don't do it. Um, every athlete comes up with their own goals, their own plan. Uh, obviously, we coach them, we provide support, but it is all on them. They are the runners. They are the ones who are getting out who want to do it. Um, nobody's forcing you to go for a run. Um, we're never going to push you beyond what you want to do. But there's an immense sense of pride and achievement when you can cross the finish line. And for many of our athletes, we just had a 5K last week, small start at 5K uh, through GHS. And for over half of our athletes, that was the first race they've ever done. Mm -hmm. And just to see their faces when they cross the finish line, I remember that feeling myself the first time I crossed the finish line. It's just incredible because you're like, I, I did a thing. And I did it alongside my able-bodied peers. Mm -hmm. You know, I was beating people behind me <laughs> who don't have disabilities. You know, it's an incredible feeling. And so uh, that is our really our main goal is that you feel a sense of pride and achievement in what you've done because you're physically fit and active and you're part of a community. Um, so as I mentioned, at Achilles Greenville we provide a lot of different things. Um, mostly that's through coaching and we work really closely with our athletes, doctors, and therapists because we don't want to be doing anything that's against their doctor's orders or you know undoing what they're doing in therapy, anything like that. We work really closely. A lot of our athletes come from Roger CPs, so we work pretty closely with them, aligning goals and making sure that everybody's on the same page. Um, we provide training plans and all of that. Some athletes come and they're like, I can walk half a mile, but I want to do a marathon. And we work with it. We work with it. It happens. Um, and so we can, we can work with any you know, ability level that comes to us. We just provide support and training plans to get there. We also uh, provide any equipment or um, adaptive services that they need. So a lot of our runners in wheelchairs prefer to run in hand cycles. <clears throat> hand cycles are extremely expensive, um, so most people don't own one themselves. So we work with Rogers CP to provide those hand cycles for anybody who wants them for practices, for races. Um, and we um, also work with athletes who are visually impaired, who have balance impairments, who need tether on holes, <clears throat> any kind of special adaptations in order to run. And um, we sponsor race registration. So once you're part of the Achilles family, you never have to pay for a race again. Whether you're a guy or an athlete, uh, we make it possible for you to go anywhere and do anything. And for a lot of our athletes who stay for years and years, um, that eventually turns into they get to go to the Paralympics or the New York City Marathon or the Boston Marathon because they've run with us for so long and they're actually elite athletes now. They never thought of themselves that way, but that's how like, they got there was through Achilles. Um, and then the biggest thing, I think, is transportation, um, because as all of us know, if you can't get somewhere, if you're not on the bus route, if you can't drive, if you can't pay for a taxi, it's just not available to you. So all of our practices, our races, we ensure that if you can't have, if you don't have a way to get there, we find a way um, so that it's accessible, everybody can come and show up. So as I mentioned, everybody is welcome at Achilles. If you walk, if you run, whatever pace you're at, um, whether you're in a wheelchair, if you um, have a guide dog, whatever that looks like, um, it's any kind of forward motion. So whatever that looks like for you, it's running for us. And uh, we support you and we call you an athlete even if you're walking 30 feet. And I'll tell you a little bit of my story that I was the person walking 30 feet a couple of years ago. Um, so it's really anybody. Um, if you are sending patients or you know people that you think might be good for Achilles our way, um, it might be good for you to just come check it out too and walk or run with us just to give it a try because it really is a community of people who um, just run and walk with each other. It's nothing more complicated than that. And so a lot of people find it's a great like social outlet to meet new people and become part of the Greenville community. So um, this, I'll tell you a little bit more about me and what Achilles means to me. Uh, so when I think of Achilles, I don't think of it as this giant nonprofit that's serving people with disabilities, even though it is that. Um, for me, it's a lot more personal. Um, a couple of years ago, I was living in Nashville, Tennessee. I went there for college, and um, I w was recently disabled, so um, I had an inner ear disease that caused progressive balance and hearing loss. 
And so I was really struggling as a young adult trying to find like new friends and new social supports because all of a sudden I was this person with a disability and what does that mean and all of this stuff. Um, so I really struggled with that because I, I didn't grow up being disabled really or thinking of myself that way even though I had some hearing loss. Um, it wasn't until I was an adult that I was kind of thrust into this new world. And so in Nashville I moved in with a roommate who was visually impaired and she was and is an incredible competitive runner, as in she's a Paralympic track star. Mm -hmm. And she kept telling me, you've got to come running with me, you've got to come running with me. And I'm like, I've never run a day in my life. I don't like running. I don't like moving. I don't like being active. Like, no, thank you. Um, and we argued about it forever. And that's actually her right here. Uh, as you can tell, she succeeded in getting me to run. Um, <laughs> but she, we would we just argue about it because I'd be like, oh, I have a disability, I can't run. And she'd be like, yeah, so do I. I run. I'm like, no, you're visually impaired. I have, like, I have a mobility impairment. That means I can't run. She's like, I don't believe that. Anybody can run. Just come to Achilles. You'll see that everybody can run. Um, so we literally like, had major arguments about this for a full year. Um, and it was, it was like a major point of tension in our relationship that I didn't understand why she ran and she didn't understand why I didn't run. Um, it was really, really stupid, but we got over it. Um, it wasn't until uh, that full year um, I started to get really, really sick and I didn't know why. And I went to the doctor um, and within a couple months they found out that I had ovarian cancer. And I was shocked. Obviously my world was turning upside down again. Um, I really didn't know what to do. and. I still had established that social support really, or that friend group in Nashville. And so just out of curiosity and kind of desperation in the middle of cancer treatment, I went to Achilles with my friend Stephanie. And um, I showed up and I walked 30 feet. I was that person who was shuffling down the street, like just could not go any further than that, I was completely exhausted. Um, and I left that night and I just, I couldn't explain it, but I wanted to go back, and I didn't know why. Um, I wanted to walk more, be with these people more, um, but it was such a friendly, welcoming atmosphere that I just, I felt like I'd found that home and that group of people that would be there for me. And they were there for me for the next several years. Um, all throughout my treatment, I kept going every single week. I loved it. Um, I discovered that I actually liked running. Like, who knew? I liked running. Uh, I fell in love with Achilles. I fell in love with running. Um, and eventually worked up to marathon distance after I finished treatment and realized that Achilles was just kind of the driving force behind me recovering and me, like, finding myself and who I wanted to be. So when I moved to Greenville, I knew Achilles was something I had to bring here. And um, we started up in January. And we now have practices. Um, in downtown Greenville area um, pretty much daily and we also have social runs that happen around the upstate on Saturdays at 8 a.m. and those are much more casual and just kind of show up and everyone talks and runs and has a good time. A lot of our more faster or elite athletes will meet on their own with their own guides and they coordinate that all themselves so I'm there to help them schedule things and etc. but um, they kind of meet on their own time. So there's opportunities for really anybody at Achilles like I mentioned before Whatever your pace is, um, if you have a disability, if you don't have a disability, you're welcome at Achilles. Um, we also have, um, we're dependent on the support of sponsors because we're a nonprofit, and all of the, our sponsorships go towards athletes, so their nutrition, their hydration, their race registrations. Everybody who works for Achilles does it for free, so we're all volunteers, and um, none of those sponsorships go towards salaries or anything like that. So yeah, that is it. If you want to learn more, um, you can contact me. Um, we also have a website, killersinternational.org. And um, you're welcome to come up and ask me any questions you'd like to. I also have little handouts if you want to remember all of this information. Um, I'd be more than happy to talk with you further about Killies. So thank you. What are your ages? Did you already cover that? It's any age. Any age. So yeah. You would live with the whole kids do it all. Yeah. Questions for Hannah? So what what is the size of the Achilles community currently here in Greenville? Like how many participants do you are you seeing? Um so it's pretty much 50-50 volunteers and athletes. Um, we have about 30 total. Um, so about 15 volunteers, 15 athletes. Um, I would love to grow our number of volunteers before we get even more athletes, um, although athletes are always welcome. 
Um, I sometimes it's harder to find able-bodied uh, volunteers who can come and help. Um, so I'm hoping we can grow that base and continue to grow our athlete base as well. It's about 30 people. Most Achilles chapters end up being somewhere around 60 to 100 people. Yeah. In your weekday runs, what what time are those? Um, they depend. They depend on our athletes. So some of them they're 5:30, 5:30 a.m. Um, later ones are 7 a.m. Um, it's really small groups. So say an athlete will be on the marathon training plan. Um, we have three athletes doing that right now, and they um, meet up with their guides at whatever location they want to, um, or the guides transport them from their home to the park or wherever. Mm -hmm. They go out for their run and they transport them. Back. So. If you don't mind me asking, what's your day job? I think this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. And then when you're like, I do this for free, so. And, yeah. yeah. I work at GHS um, with this lovely person right here. Um, I work in workforce development, so our pipeline academic programs. It's my day job. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I noticed you said that you kind of develop the plan with the runners. Mm -hmm. What if the, the runners are nonverbal or they aren't ready to develop their own plan, yeah. but we're introducing them into yeah. this new world to mm -hmm. give them other options. Mm -hmm. What's what does that look like for the ones who can't develop their own plan? Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's kind of um, so there's a couple different ways. Um, when I was in Nashville, we had a good percentage of our athletes were nonverbal. Um, so for adult athletes, oftentimes that looks like just going for a run with them and seeing how comfortable they are um, at various distances and paces. And that takes a really sensitive, experienced guide to do that. Um, there's, um, we have two siblings in our national chapter who are both, um, who have autism and are nonverbal. And they ended up, you know, loving running and their parents are able to interpret their, you know, their um, facial expressions and all of that um, to figure out this is something they really want to do. Um, but we kind of test their paces, we test their distances, and we'll do that either on the treadmill or outside. Sometimes it's easier on the treadmill because you have them in one spot and you can look at their face and look at their expressions and all of that. Um, if we do have some athletes who are, you know, they're not ambulatory, they're also nonverbal, and a lot of times Achilles is for them to have a community and their parents also come. And so they will push them in a wheelchair or a stroller. Um, and so it's social for the parents, but it's also for the children as well to um, you know, develop friendships and build that community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any more questions for Hannah? Is, is this free or do the athletes yeah. have to pay? It's totally free for anyone, guides, athletes, totally free. Yeah, I'm sure Hannah can stick around for a second when we're done. Let's give Hannah a big hand. Thank you.